Joining us now is Darius Mayfield, a political commentator and the founder and CEO of Marvel U.S. Management. Darius, I want to start with the president's address last night. It was kind of a big moment. In fact, I think it's the only second time that he has made such an address, the first being the national emergency declaration for the southern border. How did you think that went last night? I think it went well. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that, not a lot of people, but I have seen some people that disagree. A lot of it seems to be more of the same, drawing it down party lines. You know, one side is on things this way, the other side thinks this way. But I think he was very poignant. Um, I know they did have to correct some things or at least uh, expand on some things this morning. But the moves the president has, has taken from the beginning seem to have worked very well. I heard you mention him shutting down our access to China and traveling to China. A lot of the experts say that if he didn't do that, there could be thousands more deaths in this country right now. So what he did yesterday in his address, I thought, was superb. And I really like the fact that he's not, even though they try to paint it as him trying to downplay what's going on, I don't think that's the case. I think he understands what's happening. I think he also understands the numbers, which a lot of people don't seem to understand when we have hundreds of thousands of people already in the hospital from the regular flu. And we're talking about 30 deaths in the United States right now. And yes, any death is important and it, it's never a good thing. But for us to only have 30 deaths, considering what we see around the world, is a pretty good job, I believe, from the administration. And, and it's just one way we can actually judge on what they're doing. So great job on the speech last night. And I saw a lot of the president's critics last night saying things, for example, such as the travel restrictions, don't do anything to help the U.S. because there already are coronavirus cases here in the U.S. They said that there's not enough domestic programs or anything like that that can really help curb the spread of it here. But then a lot of the president's supporters saying paid sick leave, a payroll tax cut. Those are all things that kind of incentivize people to either stay home if they are sick or go see a doctor if they do believe that they have symptoms. Do you think that that is the right response, too, from the president? I do. And, you know, it's kind of funny because on one hand, they say he's not doing enough. But on the other hand, when he instituted the, the China travel ban, they said it was racist and he was doing too much. These people are really just confused at the end of the day. And it's really a lot of partisan politics being played. I come from the business world. Um, not only do I own my own business, but I work in a, 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 a very big industry, uh, the automotive industry. And I can tell you right now that that payroll uh, tax cut and the different things going on will definitely, if not blunt all the blows, will significantly help dealerships, um, help businesses, and not only the owners, but the actual employees of those dealerships. Because one of the big questions, especially in this industry right now, people are asking is, forget what happens to the owners and the stores, because a lot of these guys do have money. What's going to happen to these employees that are living paycheck to paycheck? And what will happen if you have to start shutting down businesses, closing businesses, even if it's only temporarily? What's going to happen to these people? Because a lot of these people can't even afford to miss one paycheck at the end of the day. And I think that's what's being missed. So what the president is doing right now, um, from sh shutting down travel to Europe, shutting down travel to China, I think it was the perfect, perfect move. And from there, um, again, because even with the travel to China, let's just use this as an example. If all it takes is one person to come in here that's traveling from state to state or place to place to start carrying this virus all over. So I think those were very significant steps taken. And now I think it is up to the Congress and the Senate, like the president's already indicated, to now pass measures that we can uh, pass along to the rest of the country. I think you're right. And I think it actually speaks about something a little bigger than the coronavirus itself. The fact that a lot of workers uh, don't have the means to necessarily get by to the next month without getting that paycheck, as you yeah. were saying. It kind of speaks to the idea yes. that wages are one thing, but it's also the ability of people to save that money without immediately turning around, spending it on rent, groceries. People essentially don't have yep. savings at the moment, especially young people. Yep. I mean, a lot, young people are going to be renting for most of their life at this point. Uh, the concept of buying a house is basically non-existent for people under the age of 40. But th I think this yeah. also speaks about something more political, too. We see Congress right now. They can't even necessarily get this uh, through. A simple bill just kind of providing the things that I think both sides kind of agree on. Each side is kind of saying that they don't agree with one stipulation. There's a poison pill in there for another one. D has this issue become more polarized than maybe it has been in the past regarding Ebola, Zika, H1N1, anything like that? Well, it really has, as as it seems everything else under this administration has, man. And I think people are just tired of it. Um, they really, really are. When it it's it's one thing. Listen, we can debate over 
abortion, we can debate over health care. But when it comes to something like this, where um, they've now declared it a pandemic, and you still see the leaders of this country playing political games and going back and forth, the average citizen isn't really worried about who likes who or who's willing to do what. They just want things done. They just want answers. And I think you know, not to turn this into a political win for the president, but I think when people see him make um, very concrete decisions like that, whether it's closing down uh, travel to China or closing down travel to Europe, they understand that that's what they've been missing. And they understand that's why they voted for this this uh, this president, because he can make those decisive decisions, especially being a CEO of company and co company and coming from the business world. So people are definitely tired of the bickering, the back and forth. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democratic leader, get the job done and make sure you take care of these people. Because just like you reiterated, the majority of these people cannot survive one, two, three, four weeks without a paycheck. So you better do something or it's not going to be the president you're worried about. You, you all better worry about your jobs. I think you're exactly right. And those people, too, generally don't care about Republican or Democratic wins. They just care about what helps them. And this is one of those times where people are used to people kind of coming together and doing what's best for the country. Yes. The last thing anyone yes. wants to see is partisan bickering. I think you're spot on for saying that. Darius, thank you very much for joining us tonight.